intervention. Um, next, we have Mr. Boissonneau. Well, thanks, thanks, Mr. Chair, and I'm looking forward to meeting with the regular members of the committee next week. I mean, if you take a look uh, on our side, it's the Liberal members that are normally at the Justice Committee who are here. Yeah. There's a change in the political dynamic on the other side. I think Snow delayed our NDP colleague. I don't know what prevented the regular colleagues on the Conservative side from being here today, but we'll leave that there. I think that we, nice to have you here at the committee. It's great. On, in terms of witnesses, uh, it is our custom to have um, this done in camera. And I think it would be important if we're talking witnesses, do you want us to talk in public about how the conversations went between SNC-Lavalin and Mr. Singh and Mr. Shear? Because it was clear? Yes. Great. Motion, on. motion to concur. On. Motion to concur. Yeah. Because yeah. the speculation from the other side, we're motion talking about a downgrade in Mr. in Mr. Fife's article from two anonymous sources to one. And if you listen to the CBC last week with Carol Off, she was very clear in her interview with Mr. Fife when he said there is no link whatsoever between legitimate conversations between the Attorney General and um, government colleagues and the fact that Ms. Wilson-Raybould's um, cabinet responsibilities changed. He could make no link whatsoever. So anyone who's making that link is exercising in rank speculation. So I will also reiterate that the Ethics Commissioner is looking uh, into this issue, and the people that you would like to add to this list uh, are perfectly in the purview of the Ethics Commissioner to, um, in, to investigate and to call to account, to use your language. Our job here is to take a look at the substance of the matter, which is clearly the Shaw Cross doctrine, the remediation agreements, because let's take a look at what you're wanting Canadians to see as the smoking gun. If SNC Lavalin had ended up in a remediation, okay, you'd have something. But guess what? They're going to trial. There's like, are you really serious? You're trying to make Canadians make that kind of a link? It didn't work in the way that you'd like the fiction to play out, folks. So I will be voting against this amendment and looking forward to meeting with people next week. Thank, thank, thank you very much. And, and, and just that, Ms. Raid, I certainly, we are happy to have you here. Oh, Always sure. happy. Um, I, 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 I just want. I just want to bring. I, I just want to bring back the. Uh, you know the, the camaraderie. I think sometimes this, 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 these are hard. You know discussions, and sometimes everybody's a little angsty, including myself. Um, so uh, so I think it's good to uh, to bring the temperature down, uh, Mr. McKinnon. Thank you, Chair. So I'm listening to a conflation of a, a lot of unrelated matters to, to weave a fanciful tapestry of intrigue here. Um, the fact is we don't have any real hard evidence of any wrongdoing to, to, to speak of. Um, Mr. Cullen mentioned regarding the witnesses, um, the people who are alleged to be involved are not on our list, he said. Alleged by whom? We have no one who, is, who has come forward who, who is, has self-identified as being uh, privy to the kinds of discussions that, that are um, underway here, who has, as far as I'm aware, made allegations of any individual. So, so the notion that, um, you know, people who are alleged to be involved, I mean, that the opposition certainly has made allegations of this kind, but these are sort of self-serving, um, you know, to their position. Um, Mr. Cullen also mentioned that, um, you know, SNC-Lavalin made $500,000 worth of contributions. That's very bizarre to me because for at least 15 years, that has been impossible. That's been illegal. So I don't know how or where that. that they still managed to do it. <laughs> then they're all illegal, right? I mean, you mentioned 100K as being illegal. These are not not legal. They and they and they need to be. A, well, they need to be prosecuted by the by the they elections were. commissioner, right? They were, but um, <laughs> both both conservatives and liberals returned money to for for, for this, but right. but that. In the last, nothing's been alleged for the last 10 years. They can't donate now, but let, let's move on from, from that one. Go ahead, Mr. Okay, McKinney. so uh, I'll, I'll stand corrected on that point. Um, but there's also uh, allegations that uh, Ms. Raybould was fired as Attorney General. There's no foundation for that. She went from a, from a, a senior position to another senior position, a senior position as, as a Veterans Affairs Minister where she's in charge of a multi-billion dollar file, uh, thousands and thousands of veterans who are, who are critically important to Canadians. 
but also as Associate Minister of Defense. She would get briefed on all the matters um, pertinent to defense, to, to, to be aware of our defense uh, posture and our defense matters all around the world. So it's, it's a great opportunity. It's, a, it's, it's a, a coup, frankly, for experience. I can't see how any way this could be construed as being fired. Um, but the notion that she was fired weaves back into this tapestry that, that, that the opposition likes to portray that, that there's some sort of intrigue going on here. And I don't think there's any foundation whatsoever for that. Um, so we're here today because of this article that was written by Paul Fy or Bob Fife and others um, on the 7th, in which they alleged heavy pressure, uh, urging, and so forth. And they, they left the impression that kind of any interaction between the cabinet, the PMO, and the attorney general was, was uh, illegitimate. Um, yet on the following day, the same authors um, quoted also unnamed officials as saying, um, um, Canadians should not conflate or confuse a vigorous debate in the Prime Minister's office or among the PMO and members of Cabinet over how to handle snc levelist charges with an effort to put pressure on Ms. Wilson-Raybould. A robust discussion is not pressure, one official said. Another official said the PMO had every right to raise a prosecution case with the Justice Minister because a conviction could destroy the company and hurt thousands of workers at snc Lavalin. Um, I think, and I think that one of the problems here is, is the impression is out there in, in, in the public eye that there has been, because of these kinds of, of statements, that there is something illicit going on. We have no foundation for that. We have allegations based on somebody's interpretation of, of um, discussions that we, we don't know who they are or, or whether they're even, even privy to, to any of the discussions. Um, I think it's very clear that we must make clear that it is both legal and customary for there to be discussions between the Minister of Justice and Attorney General and colleagues in the government on issues such as the prosecution of SNC-Lavalin in order for the Minister of Justice and the Attorney General to obtain information and advice. Um, the real question here is whether such dis it's not whether such discussions occurred, but whether such discussions involved direction to um, the former Minister of Justice and Attorney General to proceed in any particular way, whether that exceeded the, the Shawcross Doctrine. That's why it's so important that we study the Shawcross Doctrine so that we can so we can know what those boundaries are and, and have some idea of, of what it would take to cross those boundaries. Um, the, the question has been raised whether or not we should even be talking about the, um, the remediation agreement concept. Um, so the original article as well speaks of, of these alleged interactions trying to influence, influence the, the Attorney General to abandon a prosecution. Um, and that's absolutely not what remediation agreements are about. Remediation agreements are basically a form of plea bargain, which are available to, to uh, accused in, in all manner of aspects of law, um, criminal law anyway. Um, and it's absolutely not an escape from, from, from uh, consequences for, for their wrongful actions. But they have to admit to the wrongfulness of the action. They have to, they have to pay uh, a substantial penalty, and they have to make uh, real and significant uh, changes in their operations to ensure it doesn't happen again. This is not in any way escaping co prosecution or escaping the cons consequences of bad actions. Um, so uh, on balance, uh, I don't see any, anybody who actually is privy to these discussions who, who is alleged to have been making these allegations um, coming forward? And how can we how can we uh, deal with random people as, as just a, a fishing expedition to try and figure out whether whether there is any foundation for this or not, um, and then track it down? Um, that is why it is I think important that we delve into the the nature and purpose of the Shawcross uh, doctrine the nature and purpose and the history, perhaps, of, of the remediation agreements, and, and um, 
I'm very interested to hear from the, uh, from the uh, current Minister of Justice and the other men people mentioned in our motion in regard to these broad issues. And if, they, if they're able to throw light on other matters, fine, that's great. Um, and, and perhaps that will lead us into, into uh, further um, understanding of who else might need to be talked to as well. So um, I will be voting against the amendment and in favor of the original motion. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Police. Merci, uh, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For two years now, we've been beating around the bush. Our liberal colleagues have been criticizing our eminent colleagues here on this side, but we're talking about something that is absolutely important for all Canadians. Uh, Ms. Khalig said that we're here to make political hay, that we're doing this for the media. Uh, but I think uh, this is much more important than that. We live in a country under the rule of law. We brought forward a motion, and my colleague brought forward an amendment. Now, we're being criticized for bringing forward a motion including names of witnesses. We've been told that this should be discussed in camera and that one usually discusses witnesses in camera. However, the motion that's being rammed down our throats today includes names. So what, there's going to be an in, there was an in-camera meeting on the part of Liberals with we don't know whom? Here we have before us, uh, for example, the Minister of Justice and Attorney, Attorney General David Lamenti, who I guess must have agreed, the Deputy Minister uh, Nathalie Drouin and Clerk of the Privy Council Michael Wernick. So, in camera, amongst themselves, they decided that we put these names in a motion. But today, now we're being told, well, we have to go in camera to be able to discuss the other witness names. My colleague from the NDP has proposed names, but we're being told, nope, we can't discuss it. And we'll vote against because uh, this is, should be discussed in camera. Well. Mr. Mr. Chair, this is really a joke. It's a serious situation. Mr. Boissonneau and I believe Mr. McKinnon also said that Bob Faye, Stephen Joe Chase, a professional journalist of the Globe and Meal, what, would have uh, written fake news? Is that what they're saying? I mean, they're trying to lead us down a funny path. We're being, people are talking about the Shawcross Doctrine, about remediation agreements. These are all issues that would be included in the motion. I mean, we've already, we've discussed this enough. This is just a show. This is just a show. So, Mr. Chairman, I think that what was tabled by the two opposition parties mainly the Conservatives, is perfectly noble. We have a problem. There was an Attorney General who had to resign from her position, and now we're being led down a, a different path through all kinds of procedures. I think we have to get to the bottom of this and deal with it as quickly as possible. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Poilievre. Uh, committee members across the way have claimed that uh, I'm on the Finance Committee and they had never heard any discussion at Finance about the need to move this new deferred prosecution agreement provision over to the Justice Committee. Well, the members should have read the transcripts because that is exactly what members of multiple parties suggested should happen. In fact, all three parties. Greg Fergus, as uh, the, my friend Mr. Cullen has said, Greg Fergus, Liberal member, from the uh, Gatineau region uh, raised concerns, which my colleague has quoted, I'll quote further. He said, of the agreements, in a sense, then if I steal $10, I'm in trouble, but if I steal $10 million, I can work this out to be crude, sorry. Furthermore, the chairman of the committee suggested that, that, that finance was not the appropriate place for uh, in which such a provision should be discussed. Finally, uh, Conservative Member of Parliament Dan Albus said, and I quote, regardless of whether it was in the budget document, I think that this is not a good provision to have as part of an omnibus piece of legislation, especially to have it in the last section. He goes on, Mr. Chair, I don't know what to say other than maybe we should probably consider hiving this off and sending it to the Justice Committee. Those were his words. Those, that was his conclusion. It was an amendment to the criminal code. It ought to have been discussed here. I find it very interesting that all of a sudden liberals want to discuss the 
intricacies of deferred prosecution agreements. They want us to fall into comas, deep, irreversible comas as they drone on about legal theories, rather than talking about the facts of the case that are before, before us. And the facts are that a massive corporate giant with deep pockets lobbied the Prime Minister's office at least 14 times that we know of. That the, that, the, that the Prime Minister's office and the Prime Minister himself then raised the issue of a special deal for that same corporation with the Justice Minister, and then only a month later, she was suddenly removed from the position, um, in, in, and fo following which, she wrote a letter saying that she had spoken truth to power. It's time she had the chance to speak truth to the people. Yep. Canadians want to know. The Prime Minister has the ability to let them know. He can allow his members to vote for this amendment to bring all the witnesses, including his former Attorney General, to appear. And he can waive solicitor client privilege because he is the client. If he refuses to do that, and if members of the committee vote against having additional witnesses, they will be voting for a cover-up. Because that is exactly what this is. If the members across the way claim nothing that happened in the PMO, in the Prime Minister's office, was improper, fine. Bring the witnesses before us, have them testify under oath to say exactly that. Put all the facts before Canadians and let everyone decide. Instead, what we get are contradictory excuses. One is, they say, we can't talk about witnesses when Canadians are watching. They say those discussions need to happen in secret, in camera, as the parliamentary parlance goes. Funny, then, that their motion talks about witnesses. It lists witnesses that they would authorize to speak before the committee. If they can put forward a motion that lists witnesses, why can't we put forward a motion that lists witnesses and let's have ourselves a big group of witnesses? <laughs> the reason they don't want to vote for that is because there are certain witnesses they don't want to hear from. Right? Certain things that might be said that we don't that they don't want said when Canadian eyes and ears are watching and listening. Those things have to be kept secret. The journalists, according to the government uh, officials, have to leave the room. The transcripts have to be turned off. And nobody outside of that dark room should have the ability, according to the government, to find out what is said. Well, that yeah, is by definition a cover-up. And these committee members representing the Liberal caucus at this committee have the ability to vote in favour of transparency by allowing everyone to speak. So the question is, are they going to help the Prime Minister cover this up, or are they going to help Canadians find out what happened here? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. It's, it's interesting. It, it, it's powerful, but it's interesting that the narrative is that we were going to not support any study on this issue and we were going to cover up. Now we have put forward, now we would, we've put forward a, a motion on the study and now we're covering up as well. But it, it, I, not what you said, I agree, but you were pretty much alone on that one. Um, Monsieur Fortin. Mr. Fortin, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I've been listening to everyone over the past while. And I have before me the agenda for today that says that we're here to discuss political interference in a criminal prosecution by the Prime Minister's office. Interference allegations uh, have been made about the Prime Minister or a member of his cabinet and the attorney uh, and to the Attorney General. Now, I'm wondering how we can possibly shed light on this without hearing 
from the person who occupied the position of Attorney General at the time these things took place. So here's what I'm thinking. Would you like us to suspend, Mr. Chairman, or I, I can wait if you're if you're busy. No, no, I'm sorry. I should have been listening to you. Sorry, uh, Mr. Cullen and myself were talking about something else. What was your question? No, I didn't have a question. I'm just speaking about the situation. I apologize. I'm listening. Now, we were asked to come here to discuss political interference on the part of the Prime Minister's office involving the Attorney General. Now, uh, the Liberals, with uh, the greatest of respect, uh, are trying to um, cover this up by deciding that we would engage in a legal course on, for example, the Shawcross uh, Doctrine and remediation agreements. I think everyone is able to do their own reading and understand these concepts. But they're also suggesting that we bring forward witnesses who aren't necessarily people who will be in a good position to testify on the issue of political interference. So here are my two concerns, Mr. Chairman. First of all, I'm thinking of the 4,000 workers in Quebec whose jobs are at stake because of the discussions between the Ad Attorney General and the lawyers of SNC. These are 4,000 workers who are going to be the indirect victims along with their families of this whole issue. And this won't necessarily be resolved because our Prime Minister has been a rather amateur in his proceedings with the Attorney General. Or, and, and also because he doesn't necessarily want to waive solicitor-client privilege to allow her to appear. If there's one person that we should be listening to, it's Judy Wilson-Raybould. I don't see how we can proceed any other way. I was looking at the list of witnesses, but I have, I have the impression that I'm getting ready to go on a trip, uh, but I have no idea where I'm going. Perhaps I'm, I have to pack everything. I have to pack my, uh, my fishing rod, my swim shorts. I have to pack all kinds of things, but I have no idea where we're going. But there's a name that keeps coming back over and over again. That's Judy Wilson-Raybould, the former Attorney General. And she's the one. She's the one who supposedly would have been uh, the victim of political interference on the part of the PMO. So she has to come before us and tell us who did what, who asked her to do what. And if she can do that, then perhaps we can come up with more relevant witnesses. In my opinion... In fact, the liberal uh, motion is just a red herring. Uh, my problem is that actually what we're doing here is putting SNC-Lavalin on trial. But you know what? That's not what we're supposed to be doing. Yes, their executives uh, were involved in bribery, etc. They're going to have to pay for that, and they should. People who commit fraud have to pay for it. Now, should the business itself be sanctioned? Yes, but there, is, there are procedures. We'll see if there's going to be a remediation agreement. We've been told that apparently, perhaps, there could be a remediation agreement. I'm keeping my fingers crossed, not for myself, but for workers and their families, 4,000 workers and their families who might be out of work be simply because we can't come to an agreement so that they can keep their jobs. And now the Prime, Mini Prime Minister, an amateur, is not allowing the attorney, former Attorney General to come and speak on this situation. I'm shocked by this. Now, I don't want to have to do the job of the Attorney General or the SNC lawyers. I don't want to have to do the job of the Ethics Commissioner. They all have their own mandates. But here, in this committee, we should be considering the issues of political interference by the Prime Minister's office. And the first person, and maybe the only person, if we're only going to listen to one, should be uh, Judy Wilson-Raybould. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for your comments on the workers uh, and employees of SNC-Lavalin, because you're right, it's very important for them. It's very important for Quebec, and it's a very uh, important business. I'd like, just like to move on now to the next person. There was Ms. Kallig who wanted to speak, and Mr. Boissonneau, and then Mr. Cullen will be wrapping up on his amendment, and then we'll be going back to the main motion. Thank you. So, Ms. Kallig.
Thank you, Chair, uh, and uh, merci à Monsieur Fortin pour votre commentaire. Thank you, Mr. Fortin, for your observations. With the, with the premise, but I, I would appreciate if, if you would come to our committee a lot more and shed light on, on the important issues that we discuss. And I, I really uh, would love to have this kind of attention in our committee for the very important issues that we have we have gone through, such as human trafficking, which was our latest study, providing recommendations on how to deal with a very important uh, and very tragic issue of human trafficking across our country, um, with with access to justice, uh, and how do we ensure that that Canadians, middle class families, have that access to justice? And I I think that really comes to the crux of the issue as to what in camera really does for a committee. It takes away the partisanship. It takes away the political posturing, which we have, have, which we have been privy to today. And it allows us to have frank discussions to see what will be the most fruitful um, people who, will, who can come forward and speak to the issues that we have before them. I think Canadians have a, a, a right to know to, to seek that clarification through our committee. And I think that our committee owes it to Canadians to not be so partisan, to not be here looking for sound bites, to be able to, to try to embarrass persons uh, or to, to embarrass our prime minister or the prime minister's office at all. I think we need to put that aside. We need to put that partisanship aside. We do need to come to the table with hopefully the permanent members of the committee uh, and, and discuss uh, at length uh, who will be the most fruitful people to, to really speak to, uh, to the issues that are before us today and, and would love to have Canadians uh, in, in really what they have voted for us for is to represent them, to, to speak for them. And I, and I hope that we can give them um, what they have really voted for, which is impartial, honest representation of, of, of their needs and their demands and their wants uh, through this impartial committee. And, and I hope that our, our members across the way can really support that. I, I don't think that, uh, that we're doing, um, that we should be changing the way in which we, we conduct ourselves just because the cameras are on. I think that we need to have that impartial discussion. And my fear is that if the cameras are on, my, my, par my colleagues across the way will not be able to shut off their partisanship. And that's why I, I don't support the, uh, the amendments as proposed by, by Mr. Cullen. Thank Thanks, Chair. Thank you so much, Ms. Khaled. Um, okay, so last speaker, and then, the, then, then Mr. Cullen to finish up on the amendment is Mr. Boissonneau. Then we go to Mr. Cullen to finish up his closing remarks on the amendment, and then we'll vote on the amendment. Uh, merci, Monsieur le, le... Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think it's important to speak to Mr. Fortin's observations. I absolutely agree that it is not our mandate, and we don't have the means to, try, to be putting SNC-Lavalin on trial. There are other areas that can be done in. But I think it's very important to talk about some facts. The Attorney General did not resign, and she wasn't fired. A cabinet member who had a position as Minister of Veteran Affairs resigned. Now, a former Attorney General cannot speak to their experience because that is not her most current uh, or recent mandate around the Cabinet table. Now, on Mr. Poiliev's point, on the 7th of November, the Justice Committee dealt with the issue of uh, remediation agreements, and Member Nicholson, Fraser, and Rankin, and the Chair spoke about it. So it's not correct to say that this issue was never raised here within the Justice Committee. And with all respect, with all due respect for my Conservative colleagues, when they spoke about our witnesses, I checked. And Mr. Lametti will appear before our committee. He said in public that if ever the committee called him to appear, he would. Now, no one in the leader's office called those witnesses. But given that Mr. Wernick and Ms. Droin 
are uh, civil ser servants, if they are called before a committee, they appear before the committee. It is common procedure to make those calls. So I have to say uh, I misspoke in that case, and I apologize. Thank you, Mr. Boissonneau. I'm now going to move, give the floor to Mr. Cullen so that he can uh, speak to his amendment. This amendment to combine um, the interests of hearing from the relevant people. So, so far I've heard from Liberals that they're not interested in inviting uh, Ms. Jody Wilson-Raybould to talk. Well, you're, gonna, you're about to vote against my motion, which asks her to come as a witness. You could... That is true. Then, see, you can you can say something's not true, but but then you. Oh, okay. So let me. Okay. So my liberal friends who are trying to help me here, I think, chair. The suggestion is then the next Tuesday in camera, we're going to we're going to put Miss Jody Wilson Raybolt on the list. Ah, we will discuss it. So <laughs> we're discussing it right now, and yet with the cameras on and people witnessing our conversation, you won't commit to it. You understand the difference between discussing something and committing to something, and you also understand the difference in just trust me isn't going to work on this particular conversation, because just trust me is what the Prime Minister was doing. And to the comment that we're here to try to embarrass the Prime Minister, he's doing that all on his own. He doesn't need my help. He doesn't need any of our help. He's conducting himself in the way that he thinks is best. And I, fr frankly, as I commented before, I think his comments have been beneath the office of Prime Minister when he literally stood in front of buses to talk about how terrible Jody Wilson-Raybould was in her role and how she um, disappointed him. My, my goodness. Misunderstanding the role of Attorney General entirely. Fine, I'm sure you'll have a briefing. One, one quick uh, comment, Chair, to you, because sub-judiciary, something before the court that we would worry about impinging upon, thankfully, 35 years ago, we had a ruling from a Speaker of the House of Commons. And I'll read it just to give committee members assurance that we can investigate this case while it's going on in court. The House has never allowed the Subjudiciary Convention to stand in the way of its consideration of a matter vital to public interest or to the effective operation of the House. Anyone want me to repeat that? Yeah, okay, yeah. So <laughs> the House has never allowed the Subjudiciary Convention to stand in the way of its consideration of a matter vital to public interest or to the effective operation of the House. So we've had 35 years in which we've lived under this rule as parliamentarians. We're quite comfortable with it. And so the motion that we put forward today, that I put forward today, was an attempt to combine the concerns raised. Now, to my friend Mr. McKinnon, if the only witnesses we ever invited to committee were those that self-identified them in the middle of a fraud, we'd never have witnesses at committee. We can't necessarily wait for them to put their hand up and say, oh, yes, I put pressure on the former Attorney General of Canada. Please invite me to your committee. Sometimes we have to go out and seek them. Now, the... Bush, Mr. Bouchard met 15 times with SNC-Lavalin to talk about, what did he talk about? Justice and law enforcement. This company met over and over again with senior members of the Prime Minister's office to discuss justice and law enforcement. That's a, an incredible interest in justice and law enforcement coming from a construction and engineering company. If there's nothing untoward here, which is what Liberal members keep telling us, the first accusation my Liberal colleagues have made is that opposition members are making accusations without evidence. And then go on to say that evidence can't be true because of your unfounded allegations. That somehow the Prime Minister said this and so then everything must be clear. The Prime Minister's arguments have not worked out well. If you want to alleviate the suspicions of Canadians that there is the potential of any effort to cover up. I'm not suggesting the PMO is instructing you to do it. You might be just doing it on your own. If you want to alleviate that suspicion, then allow Ms. Wilson-Raybould to come forward. Allow the Principal Secretary to come forward. Allow Mr. Bouchard, who met 15 times with SNC-Lavalin, to come forward. It's uh, frustrating uh, for me because, uh, to Mr. El Sassi's point, um, I'm not going to give you too much credit for showing up. You had to show up. Uh, the, the opposition members have the authority under Section 106.4 to call a meeting like this. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad we're talking about this. But in, in the attempt to find some joint resolution that would allow us to do a proper investigation into this, because that's what committees do from time to time, liberals seem to have dug in and said, we're only going to invite these three witnesses Yes, because when I've suggested other witnesses, you're just about to vote against it. So that then is true. If you, if you later on Tuesday in camera decide that the witnesses I've suggested or my colleagues from the Conservatives suggested 
are now important to you because they're at the center of this matter, then wonderful, we'll go from there. But we have this opportunity here today, and you haven't even bothered to phone them or had someone phone them or whatever the case may be. It's, um, it's, it's, it is interesting. We want to study remediation now after it's already passed into law. Um, and, and in terms of the offer, I think Mr. Boissonneau made the offer to discuss Oh, I'll, I won't speak for the Conservatives, certainly, but if he, if he would like to uh, hear what we heard at the SNC-Lavalin meeting with uh, some of my colleagues, I'd be happy to show you ours if you'll show me yours. We'll, we'll in fact, come forward and tell you everything that was discussed at that meeting, because I know the result of that meeting. When SNC asked for this special plea deal to be worked into a budget agreement, we told them no, and then we voted against it. You folks put it into an omnibus bill, and which your own committee members sitting on that finance committee found inappropriate and you still pushed it through Parliament. So actions speak just as loud as words here. Lastly, I'll say, the committee, this committee in particular has a solid and well-deserved reputation of trying to find common ground over sometimes very tricky and difficult issues with regards to justice. It's held up as one of the higher committees. The amendment to this motion that I put forward today, Chair, was in, it was in respect to that tradition. I don't know if the accusations of partisanship and whatnot were also directed at me. It doesn't really matter. But to vote against what I think most Canadians would see as a pretty reasonable amendment. If you're open to hearing from Ms. Wilson-Raybould, then vote for it. If you're opening to he open to hearing from Mr. Butts, then vote for it as well as Mr. Bouchard. If you're not, then you'll vote against it. And those actions will speak louder than your words. So with that, I move my motion as amended to the uh, central motion brought by hey, the you. Liberal Party. Mr. Chair, I'd ask for a recorded vote and uh, let the record show that anyone who votes against Mr. Cullen's very reasonable uh, amendment is voting in favor of a cover-up. Okay, that, that statement is, uh, uh, is unbecoming of you, Mr. Cooper. I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Um, Mr. Clerk, we'll proceed with a vote on the amendments. Uh, merci, Monsieur le Président. Donc, la question... Thank you. The question is on Mr. Cullen's amendment. Mr. Boissonneau. Mr. Fraser? No. Ms. Khalid? No. Mr. McKinnon? No. Uh, Mr. Barrett? Yes. Uh, Mr. Cooper? Yes. Uh, Ms. Wright? Yes. Mr. Cullen? Yes. Yes, four, four, nays, contre, cinq. Okay. So the Amendment was moved and it's defeated. On the principal motion, colleagues, uh, the meeting, oh, sorry, let me just, uh, the, the, me the meeting was originally scheduled for two hours. We've now passed that point. Um, my question for you is whether or not everybody is prepared to limit the remaining speakers to those on the list or whoever puts up their hand right now, and then, and then, we, and then we will move to a vote on the main motion. Is it, the people who are now on the list are Mr. Barrett, um, Ms. Khalid and Mr. Fraser. Can you read Mr. Cooper? Uh, Mr. Cooper? Mr. Polyev? Uh, anyone else? Um, Mr. Cullen? Mr. Barrett, you're already on the list. Um, is there anyone else? Uh, Mr. Boissonneau? Okay. Okay, so speak now or forever. Hold your peace, everyone. Tout le monde. Monsieur Fortin? J'imagine vous, uh, vous serez la. I imagine you'll be the last one to speak, Mr. Fortin. So. I hope you'll leave us with wise words. Oh, I only speak wise words, Mr. Chairman. I, I don't know we say them wisely, but they are only wise words. Who is next? Mr. B Mr. Barrett. Okay, uh, thank you very much, um, Mr. Chair. And so the opposition parties put forward uh, a motion to be considered here today, and uh, two hours and 15 minutes into the meeting, it, it's uh, not the motion that we're discussing, as is your prerogative, you recognized. A uh, Liberal member of the committee and the motion that they had put forward. And as a new but regular member of the Standing Committee on Justice and Human Rights, um, and with, and with a, a consideration to um, your comments at the outset about the common ground that members of this committee have traditionally been able to, uh, to find in, in furthering uh, the business uh, and, and the good work of this committee, um, I would have hoped that with the um, with the motion put forward uh, by the by the Liberal members, um, and at the outset stating that they were looking for you know some common ground to be built around that, that the very um, the very reasonable amendment put forward by uh, by Mr. Cullen 
would have been given more consideration than just outright refusal, which um, which is uh, essentially what happened. This this was a, a, a clear uh, cut right down the, the middle of the room as far as uh, support for and against. Um, however, there still is an opportunity, um, though uh, the Liberal members do hold the majority on this committee, they have the opportunity with the motion that they've put forward to make to make an amendment and not to hold the uh, consideration and selection of witnesses in secret next week. And, and though it may be a convention or tradition that those, uh, that those deliberations are done in camera, that there is an opportunity in these exceptional circumstances to avoid the perception that uh, there is something to hide and that they, um, and that they amend uh, their motion to um, hold those discussions in public and that we um, and that they give themselves the opportunity to uh, not uh, not position themselves uh, in in uh, in the light that uh, is is pretty clear that that we've got that they've got something to hide and that the the witnesses put forward are very reasonable and very germane to the subject matter. So I think that with a view to the motion uh, put forward by by the Liberal members that. Um, that very simple adjustment ought to be made. Thank, thank you very much, Mr. Barrett. Uh, next person was Ms. Khaled. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair. I, I, I really think that uh, that we must come to a decision and, and uh, have a vote on uh, on on this uh, on the motion before us, which I think really speaks to what is the substance of what uh, the parties opposite and, and what uh, uh, us uh, impartial members on the Liberal side, as well as Canadians, uh, really hope to to look into uh, in, in, uh, in, in understanding what uh, what the nature of the relationship is between uh, the Attorney General and, and, and government and uh, the Prime Minister's office, including cabinet ministers, etc. Uh, I, th I think that we should go ahead and uh, and, and move to a vote uh, immediately, uh, and and that uh, you know if I had better faith or more faith in in the members across the way, uh, if uh, you know with respect to their political posturing, um, would be happy to have this discussion uh, you know uh, in public. But but I, I really fear that uh, that they will they will use their their their, their tactics as, as as they've shown over the past number of days uh, to to make this a, a very very heavy political issue and then to really impede uh, the, the, the truth-finding exercise that we are about to embark upon. Uh, so I, I, I hope that we can move to, uh, to a vote on this motion immediately, uh, the motion that is before us. Uh, thanks, Chair. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Fraser. Uh, thanks very much, Chair. I, just a couple of points. First, um, uh, I know this has been the uh, subject of a lot of discussion today. I do think we should vote on the main motion. Um, I, I just want to be clear on a couple of things. First of all, um, the fact that, again, just to reiterate, the fact that going in camera to discuss a, pot a potential legal issue, and I respect Mr. Cullen's point there, but uh, on the subjudici principle, we don't have that information at our fingertips right now in order to make a decision on that. Those are normally things that would be discussed in camera. That, that's, that would be perfectly normal, uh, as well as timetable to look at other issues that this committee may or may not be dealing with. Uh, we, we, we generally would uh, have those discussions in, or we would always have them in, in camera, uh, as well as uh, uh, other witnesses. So uh, I, I think it's important people understand that that meeting in order to have those discussions uh, regarding things that are very important for this committee to consider before embarking on this study uh, is, is needed to be done in that fashion. And then, of course, uh, any meetings flowing from that will be in public. That I don't want to leave the false impression that we're talking about having uh, meetings uh, in camera that this study is going to undertake. So I think that's an important point, and I'll leave it there, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Fraser. Uh, next, have Mr. Cooper. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. And uh, in the three and a half years that I've had the privilege of serving on this committee, we've had a number of good days. We've uh, gotten a lot of good things done in which we've been able to put aside partisan differences and look at what is in the best interests of Canadians, the best interests of the law. 
but I have to say this is not one of those days. This is the most disappointing day that I've had on this committee. I really did believe, and, and Mr. Chair, you said that uh, members, that we just dismissed this committee exercise out of hand with respect to our motion. Not true. I, I had said many, many times publicly on the record that I had faith in members uh, on the Liberal side that they would put aside partisan differences. They would put aside what is in the interests of the PMO and do what is in the interests of Canadians. Sadly, Mr. Chair, I learned today that on this issue, I was wrong. What we learned today is that Liberal members on this issue, which speaks to corruption at the highest levels <coughs> of the PMO, are nothing more than agents of the PMO doing the bidding of the PMO. How do we know that? Well, very simply, when I, along with Ms. Raid, asked a very straightforward question about how did these three witnesses, the Attorney General, the Deputy Attorney General, and the Clerk of Privy Council appear on the list of witnesses to call to the exclusion of individuals such as Gerald Butts? Well, there was a lot of confusion over there. It was pretty clear that Mr. Boissonneau hadn't drafted the motion. Uh, but we got the answer that it was apparently the government house leader's office that was involved. In other words, the government house leader was directing what liberal MPs on this committee would bring forward. And, uh, and, uh, and so uh, there, there we have it. There we have it for the record. It's very clear. It's very plain. But this is not a committee that on the liberal side that is acting independently and for the interests of Canadians. Now, that's sad. And let the record also show that when it came time to voting on Mr. Collins' amendment, Liberal MPs voted against calling Gerald Butts, who met with SNC-Lavalin on multiple occasions, including on issues related to justice and law enforcement issues. When given the opportunity to call Mr. Bouchard, who again met with SNC-Lavalin multiple times, on justice and law enforcement issues, Liberal MPs voted no. And when it came time to voting on whether to call perhaps the most important witness, that of former Attorney General Jody Wilson-Raybould, Liberal members voted no. Mr. Boissonneau, uh, parroting the Prime Minister's lines, uh, cited the issue of solicitor-client privilege. And, I, and, and the simple answer is that the Prime Minister can waive that privilege. And I would hope that in the interest of getting to the bottom of this, that Liberal MPs would agree that it's important that the Prime Minister stop the cover-up and unleash the former Attorney General. And so with that, I'd be, I would like to propose an amendment to the motion that, that m m Mr. Chair, I will read my amendment that the committee call on the Prime Minister to immediately waive any solicitor client order. privilege I, involving I, I, I have a point of order which I have a point of order sorry I don't know where it came from but somebody said point of order Mr. McKinnon we are well past time that we've allocated for this for this so this meeting should have ended 15 minutes ago I'm happy to vote on the main motion Cover but, up. Uh, okay. It's a cover up and it's becoming clearer by the day. I haven't I, met I think it was becoming, I, th I think again, number one, that's Mr. Mr. Cooper had the floor. As far as I know, he's perfectly allowed to put an amendment while he had the floor, even though I thought we had an agreement beforehand that we were going to have these speakers and we we're going to vote on the main motion. However, absolutely, we can have an amendment. So we can continue with this list. And then hopefully we can both on both 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 vote on the amendment and the main motion and actually uh, go through this meeting yes. and come to some conclusion today. But Mr. Cooper, you have yes. the floor. Yes. Well, before I was interrupted, I will uh, again uh, state my uh, amendment that uh, this committee call on the Prime Minister to immediately waive any purported 
solicitor-client privilege involving the former Attorney General Jody Wilson-Raybould in respect of the SNC-Lavalin matter so that Ms. Wilson-Raybould can speak. Uh, yeah, I'm wondering if it introduced like a new... Can you want to copy that, please? Yeah, no, I, I understand. I'm trying to determine if that is within the scope of the motion. Sorry, I, I, I'm, I, once we have it, we'll, we'll make that determination. Uh, or even, I, I mean. Well, it, it, it's yes. Yes. So the reason that this is in order is because the one of the witnesses may, of course, be Jody Wilson Rabel. She is uh, the she is at the center of this matter, and for her to testify in this committee, uh, that it would be good for her to have legal certainty that she is allowed to speak freely. Mm -hmm. So this amendment is just simply a friendly amendment to what the government has put forward. Um, it, it uh, and I, I don't see this one. Not, not only, not only, not only is it consistent with um, having an, uh, hearings, but it is consistent with the, the the intention of the original motion. So it is in order. Well, again, you're, I, under, I understand the link to the potential testimony of a potential witness before the committee. However, I'm I'm still having. I just I need to see how it's how it's formulated and where in the motion it is, so I'm going to reserve judgment for the moment on whether or not it's receivable. Um, well, we're going to, Mr. Podiev, were you planning to speak to that issue or were you planning to speak to the? I can speak to the main motion. Okay, well, why don't you speak? To the, why don't you speak to the main so we don't slow you down, and then I'll let you. I'll, I'll try to rule while you're at the end of that, and I'll give you a chance to go to. I shouldn't be telling you what I think would be, but what would be in order if you suggested that at that, 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 that meeting that subject be introduced. But I don't know that adding that at the, con at the end of that line, I mean, it's talking about what we're doing at a Tuesday meeting. I, 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 I appreciate it. I don't think that, I don't think that it's it, within the context of the motion. I would tentatively with this. Sorry? You're fine. Put it at, before that. Wherever it is, if you yeah. find that it's, it just vote against it if that's how you feel. If you want to cover it up, yeah. you just I, again. Yes or no? I think there's. I think there's. I think there's going to be ample opportunity. What I'm going to say is, I think there's going to be ample opportunity to introduce that motion at subsequent meetings outside of being an amendment to, to this motion. And I think it's extraneous to this motion. That's the that's the the clerk's in, belief in mine. I, I'm going to rule that out of order. However, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Polyev. Point please, of order. I, I'm, I'm making a ruling, so please let me make the ruling. Um, I will allow you to introduce that as a separate motion at the earliest possible moment. So once we finish dealing with this motion, I will be prepared to let you raise that as a separate motion. Today. Uh, I have Today. no problem. I have no problem as long as we limit the time frame. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's. I think that's the fairest thing. I have no problem that we discuss it, but I'd rather deal with this motion and then bring that as a separate motion. Mr. Polyev. Thank you very much. And uh, listen, I know that the, uh, the government uh, members on this committee uh, would like uh, to cover this matter up in a manner as inconspicuous as possible. That's why, of course, they're asking for the discussions on the future study to go to, to happen in a secret meeting. And I have heard them, they're heckling, and so are their supporters in the gallery heckling whenever we point, that, point out that fact. But the reality is that the principal player at the, at the heart 
of this matter is Miss Jody Wilson Rabel. She is the former Attorney General. She has uh, been for she has resigned in order to preserve her integrity after a series of highly suspect activity that we now know occurred. And that activity, of course, is 14 meetings between SNC Lavalin and the PMO, meetings between high level PMO officials and Ms. Raybolt, including discussions involving the Prime Minister himself, all regarding the possibility of a special deal for an accused, a large accused corporate criminal. And she has, in a highly unusual move, resigned from cabinet, said that one of the reasons why she believed she was originally moved from her position is because she spoke truth to power. Mm -hmm. All of the, the only point in even holding these discussions is if we can hear from her. But yet the prime minister is silencing her. He's using his legal authority to prevent her from speaking because he's afraid of what she has to say. So what conservatives are asking, what Canadians are asking is, let her speak. Now, the Prime Minister is the client. Client can waive solicitor client privilege. Um, I, I don't even know why this is a matter of controversy for members across the way. If they want the truth to come out, then they would be willing to, with, with, without hesitation, to support uh, a call for the Prime Minister to do that. And so I conclude my remarks with, uh, with a motion that the committee call on the Prime Minister to immediately waive any purported solicitor-client privilege involving former Attorney General Jody Wilson-Raybould in respect of the SNC-Lavalin matter so that Ms. Wilson-Raybould can speak. Thank you. Thank you. We are currently dealing with another motion, so you can't move a motion at this time. We're debating an existing motion. Was it I, an amendment? No, he's not proposing an amendment. Oh, okay. He's proposing okay. a totally new motion. You can't, you can't, I, I already ruled that it would have been out in order as an amendment, but that I will entertain it as a new motion following the discussion of, on this motion and the conclusion of the discussion on this motion. I believe with unanimous consent, uh, we can allow it to go ahead. <laughs> do I have unanimous consent? Yes. Yes. Okay, well, we do not have unanimous consent. Note that members of the Liberal side refuse to provide unanimous consent for this motion to go ahead. Yeah, as, as, as a normal matter, of course, yes. Um, oh, okay, uh, we are now with Mr. Cullen. Huh, I like the introduction, Chair. That was very enthusiastic. I always do an upbeat introduction for you. Oh, wow, I'm blushing now. Now Rankin gets ovation, so but you it, get it. It feels to me, uh, I, I buy my kids one of those, you know, connect the dot books. You, you follow one number to the next. But for anybody who's ever done it before, you, you, you flip the page and you can clearly see what the thing is. But little kids get the enjoyment of actually connecting all the dots and then realizing at the end what the picture is. It, it's, it does baffle me that my Liberal colleagues have seen the events of the last six days and say, clearly there's nothing untoward here. Where every Canadian, many, many former attorneys general, many law experts have told us that obstruction charges are brought with less evidence than what we've seen already in this because the, the gravity of what we're talking about is so severe. I appreciate my friends talking about their independence, talking about the need to reassure Canadians that everything is fine. The best way to do that would be in the most transparent ma manner possible. We, we cl clearly know that Ms. Wilson-Raybould should be invited to this committee to tell us from her perspective, given the limitations that the Prime Minister's privilege puts upon her ability to speak, and, and Liberals just voted against it. Don't, don't keep saying that you didn't when you just did. The facts, you're entitled to all your own opinions, but not your own facts. And the facts of the matter are clear, that we just offered to invite Ms. Wilson-Raybould to the committee. And now we're back to this motion, where the current Attorney General has already publicly said he doesn't believe there's any evidence to allow an investigation, and has also said that he hasn't spoken to Ms. Wilson-Raybould at all or anybody else that's involved in the allegations that have existed in the newspaper. So. To, this is this is as as one pundit has said is a, is a bird box investigation. You're 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 looking without looking by intention. Let's not place a blindfold on the committee and then say we're doing the good work of the public. Let's not put these limitations down and refuse the principal actors in this play 
and suggest that we're somehow doing our best due diligence. That's just not true. You can, you can justify it however you want and pacify yourselves, but that's clearly not what's going on. We came, I came today with the clearest intentions to find some space in between what the Conservatives had proposed, a more exhaustive list, frankly, which may have been actually more complete and satisfying. And then we saw, without consultation, the Liberals come forward with a very, very limited a list of witnesses, some of which have already told us that they already think nothing untoward has happened, and then the potential of a very exhaustive study into some things that we already know, for example, sub rules. I can read the Speaker's ruling again if my friends would like. As, as a, an attempt to, I hope not delay justice, because when you delay justice, you deny justice. We know that. This committee better than most. And it feels to me like every scandal I've ever watched, it's the incident itself, and then it's the attempt to hide from any sort of responsibility that is sometimes greater than the initial incursion. And Canadians don't stand for it. And, and I know none of my colleagues were here during sponsorship or any of those days, but the lines from Liberals sitting at tables like this said there's nothing to see here. There's nothing to see here. Nothing untoward has happened. I believe the Prime Minister when he said no money went to special interests in Quebec during sponsorship. And that just wasn't true. So it's disappointing. I know I'm not a uh, standing and permanent member of this committee, but knowing the work that you've done, knowing Mr. Rankin's contribution, we came into this meeting with hopes uh, that has now become a faint hope that next Tuesday, in camera, behind closed doors, suddenly Liberals will believe that hearing from Jody Wilson-Raybould, hearing from Gerald Butts, hearing from Matthew Bouchard and others that met extensively with SNC-Lavalin to talk about criminal affairs will suddenly happen. I hope it does, but that hope has become much fainter today. I'll be opposing this motion because it doesn't do what I believe this committee's job and responsibility is, which is to work on behalf of Canadians to put some light on this sort of sorted affair. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Collin. Uh, Mr. Fortin. Mr. Fortin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm not going to repeat everything I said earlier, but obviously uh, I agree with the amendments that have just been brought forward. You know, we can't do this kind of work without them. I mean, I'm just looking back at the agenda. We were supposed to discuss the request to study reports of political interference. And we can't do this without hearing from the most important individual, that person who would have been the victim of that political interference. Anything else is just a waste of taxpayers' money. It's a waste of time. It's just beating around the bush. We can listen to any number of witnesses, and we'll ask them if they're aware of whether or not Ms. wilson Raybot was uh, under pressure by the PMO. And they'll all tell us, well, ask her yourself. We don't know. So anywhere, even in small claims court, you have the person, the main person involved, come forward. And I appreciated what you said, Mr. Chairman. You said you were inviting everyone to come forward and participate in a collegial fashion. So your words are very wise. And so I'm going to repeat your words back to you. Let's stop this unhealthy partisanship. You know, we're ta if we're talking about a cat, let's, let's meet the cat. Let's see the cat. So I think anything else is just continuing to beat around the bush. Now, I'd like to wrap up with wise words. So I'm going to say that I did like Mr. Boissonneau's suggestion that I come here more frequently. And so I'd just like to point out that the Bloc Québécois would be very happy to be uh, recognized as a full-fledged participant in your work. We'd be very happy also to be acknowledged in the House. So if that's your offer, well, uh, it gives me great pleasure to hear you say that. And perhaps we should wrap up on a historic agreement to recognize Bloc Québécois. Thank you, Mr. Fortin. It's Ms. Kallig who said that, by the way. Well, I still have Mr. Boissonneau on my list and Mr. McKinnon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think it's very important, before we vote, to look at the main motion once again. It's very important for us and for the country to understand what remediation agreements are. It's important 
what that represents, what it means. And the shock cross doctrine is important to all Canadians because what it does is set out the parameters of conversations between uh, call, cabinet colleagues and other departments. So I think it's very important to understand the basic principles and that we have the right people before us to come and testify before the committee on this matter. Now, despite the fact that Mr. Cullen said that we have sub judicial rules and that we've had them for 35 years, I think it's very important to talk about what that means in 2019, especially when you're talking about two different court proceedings. We have to look at these rules very closely. We cannot jeopardize court proceedings under our legal system. It's critical, critical and it's one of our main responsibilities. With respect to client solicitor privilege, it's also very clear that the uh, Prime Minister has asked uh, David Lametti to consider this issue. It's very complex. <coughs> and our colleague, the Minister and Attorney General, has to be able to provide sage and wise counsel to our Prime Minister. And that request has already been made. You have in camera and colorful language from the opposition about secrecy. Let's be clear and put on the record that in camera discussions, the results are known, the decisions are known after the meetings. And so we have to make sure that we're able to talk about these sensitive matters uh, in confidence among members of this committee. And I look forward to seeing the regular members once again. And to Mr. Mr. Cooper's point. point of order. Sorry, Mr. Boissonneau, just a small point of order. Just very brief. Uh, what Mr. Boissonneau just said is not entirely correct. Only, Which? Only, only, uh, that all decisions that are made in camera are known. Only positive decisions are known. We will have positive decisions about a witness list. That will be known. No, you, we'll have positive you, decisions I'm, I'm about sure the timeline my, of the my study. My friend is a very intelligent person. He knows what I'm referring to. Uh, if the committee rejects the proposals that are put forward in camera, that is not known. Well, I'm confident that we will have positive results in the meeting next Tuesday. Now, to Mr. Cooper's comment, I may be colorful, but I'm not a bird. I don't have nearly enough plumage. And so my colleagues are my own. I am no parrot. My comments and my work here today are my own. And this motion was crafted by Liberal members of this committee this morning. And if you would think that there was a cover-up going on, we would have just shut this down at 310. Let's be serious. And Canadians know that. If there was some desire from our side to not shine a light on this, to not look at this, to not have three witnesses in good faith on the list today, we would have shut this down at 310. And so to say anything else is just to continue the memes and the social media bullying that you have coming to all our offices. If that's how you want to play this, then go ahead. But we will make sure that we do this sensitively, responsibly, and understand that we can get to the bottom of this for on behalf of Canadians. That's our job. Thank you very much. It, I appreciate that. We'll now go to a vote on the main motion. I'm sure somebody will want it to be uh, recorded. Recorded vote yeah. and let the record show, but a vote in favor okay. of this motion. We're not going to do that again. That's, uh, that's out of order for a number of reasons. Um, so, uh, Mr. Clerk, please take the roll on the main motion. Those voting in favor support the main motion uh, put forward by Mr. Boissonneau. Those voting against do not support it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Uh, Monsieur Boissonneau. Mr. Boissonneau. Uh, Mr. Essassi. Mr. Fraser? Yes. Ms. Khalid? In favor. Mr. McKinnon? Yes. Uh, Mr. Barrett? Against. Mr. Cooper? Against. Uh, Ms. Wright? Against. And Mr. Cullen? Opposed. Yes, yeah, pour, cinq, five, and nay, is contre, four, quatre. Thank you very much. The, that motion is carried. Now, I've promised Mr. Cooper he can put forward a different motion. I've been told by colleagues that there's travel issues. 
Um, so I'm wondering if we can let Mr. Cooper put forward his motion and agree to come back to that motion on Tuesday, coming out of camera, following whatever part we do in camera for this, this meeting, and go out of camera to go into Mr. Cooper's mo uh, motion on Tuesday so people can make their flights. Well, Would Mr. Chair, with the great respect, this is a very straightforward motion that really shouldn't oh, oh. require a lot of debate. In fact, uh, we, sh we can proceed immediately to a vote right here, right now. And uh, I would hope that liberals would do the right thing and, and let Ms. wilson Raybould speak. That's, said, that's Ms. all. Ms. That, okay, sir, yeah. Mr. So, Greg, does everybody have a copy of this no, motion? No, if you can read it, please. So, and nous n'avons pas en français. We don't have the French version, I believe. Call on the Prime Minister to immediately waive any purported solicitor-client privilege involving former Attorney General Jody wilson Raybould in respect of the SNC lavalin matter so that Ms. wilson Raybould can speak. Um, I, Mr. Mr. Boissonneau, do you have any procedural? Just to reiterate what I said in French, Mr. S Mr. Chair, the Prime Minister has asked the current Attorney General to look into this matter, yeah. and that this is a very serious and specialized issue of law, and that it requires the right analysis and examination, and that the current Attorney General, uh, Honorable David Lametti, is looking into this on behalf of the Prime Minister. I think that is where it should reside. Sorry, I, I was just wondering. I, I thank, thank you, Mr. Boston. I was just wondering if we were allowed to vote without the French version, but we apparently can. Yeah, I, well, I think we should just proceed to a vote and let everyone. No. Generally, as you can see, our committee does try to be bilingual. There are two official languages, uh, French and English. We do have simultaneous interpretation. Well, in our committee, we do really do our best to be bilingual, and I wanted you to know that, says the chair. I'm sure a recorded vote. Yes, a recorded vote, and everyone can catch your flights, and we'll know who's on the side of getting answers and who wants a cover-up. Oy vey! Oy vey. Okay. Um, Mr. Clark. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. The, la question est donc sur la the question is on the main motion, as moved by Mr. Cooper. Mr. Bosno. Uh, Mr. Isassi. No. Mr. Fraser. No. Uh, Ms. Khalid. No. Mr. McKinnon. No. Uh, Mr. Barrett. Yes. Uh, Mr. Cooper. Yes. Uh, Ms. Wraith. Yes. Mr. Cullen. I'm voting for the motion, but against the cover-up. Is that is that right? <laughs> That's correct. That's correct. Okay. Just wanted to know yes to no. Wow. Yes nice. pour quatre. Uh, nays contre five. Parfait. Le, le... Then the motion is defeated. I'm just going to leave you with the fact that we have now adopted a motion. Um, I think that's a step forward uh, and, and was a step that I don't think some of my colleagues probably expected. Um, but I, I think we're moving forward and we're going to call a meeting on Tuesday. Uh, I will let you guys know what time that meeting will be. Um, but I will check out with everybody's schedule at what time uh, the meeting will be. So I thank everybody for being here. Je vous remercie. Thank you much, very much.